click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about the concept of polymerization. Polymerization is the process in which many monomers come together, they combine together and form long chains. They can either form linear long chains or branched long chains. They can also have cross bonds between the two chains. Over here, the monomers are nothing but the macromolecules. Now, these macromolecules come together and form polymers. We'll study in detail in this session. Polymerization. Polymerization is a process or the reaction in which the monomers combine together to form polymers. So now what exactly are monomers? Monomers are nothing but macromolecules which come together to form a polymer. What is a macromolecule? So there are two concepts. One is known as micro, the other one is known as macro. Macromolecules are huge molecules or big molecules. Micromolecules are small molecules. That means over here in polymers, macromolecules, that means huge molecules, having high molecular density and high molecular weights come together, combine together and form long chains and they form sheets all together and these are known as polymers. So over here in this table we have a list of monomers and the polymers. The first monomer we have over here is vinyl chloride. We will see the structure of vinyl chloride. It is C, double bond C and now this C is attached to a Cl and all the rest attachments are with hydrogen over here. That means that this C, every carbon has a valency of 4. That means every carbon can all together make 4 bonds. So the first carbon over here is making 4 bonds. The first two are with this carbon. The third one is with this chlorine and the fourth one is with hydrogen. For this carbon, the second carbon also has a valency of 4. It can all together make 4 bonds. So the first two are with this carbon. The second is with this hydrogen and finally we have this with the fourth hydrogen over here. So in short this carbon is making four bonds and even this carbon is making four bonds. So altogether four bonds are made by both the carbons and this is my macromolecule. So vinyl chloride is the macromolecule over here and this will combine with many other vinyl chlorides to make polyvinyl chloride and this is nothing but my polymer. Polyvinyl chloride is also known as PVC and we have many PVC pipes. This is used for making plastic pipelines. The second over here we have is vinyl acetate. The structure of vinyl acetate is this carbon is attached to another carbon and over here this carbon is attached to double bond O on one end and an OH on another end and this carbon, the first carbon is attached to three other hydrogens. So if we see the valency of this, every carbon has a valency of four, every carbon can make all together overall four bonds over here. The first carbon over here is making the first bond with this carbon, the second is with this hydrogen third also with hydrogen and fourth with hydrogen. That means the first carbon is making four bonds, one with carbon and three with hydrogen. In the case of the second carbon, over here we have the second carbon and this second carbon it is making two bonds with oxygen, the third bond with OH and the fourth bond with this carbon. So overall this is also a balanced or valanced carbon which makes four bonds completing all the four of its valencies. This is nothing but vinyl acetate and this vinyl acetate, many such vinyl acetates come together to form polyvinyl acetates. The third over here is ethylene. Ethylene is nothing but C, double bond C and over here we'll have other two hydrogens on this side and other two hydrogens on this side. That means this first carbon has a valency of four. Out of four, the first two bonds are made with the second carbon where this carbon has two other hydrogens attached to it. This carbon also has two other hydrogens attached to it. That means the first carbon makes four valencies. The second carbon also makes four valencies. And many such ethylenes come together to form polyethylene. And this is my polymer polyethylene. Polyethylene or polyethylene is the monomer or the polymer which we use for our polyethylene bags which are used to carry vegetables. The fourth monomer over here is styrene. Let us see the structure of styrene. Styrene is nothing but a benzene ring. And this benzene ring has a C, double bond C attached to it. So the first carbon will have one hydrogen. The second carbon will have two hydrogens. 
Why so? Because this is a benzene ring. Benzene ring will have alternate pi bonds and sigma bonds over here. This carbon over here has a valency of 4. That means it is allowed to make 4 bonds over here. Out of the 4 bonds that it makes, the first 2 have gone to this carbon. The third one has gone to the benzene. That means only 1 valency is left. Only 1 capacity is left. And that one is over here with the hydrogen. For this carbon, it can also make four bonds. Out of the four bonds, there are first two which are going to this carbon and the next two are going to the hydrogen. So this is styrene and the polymer version of it is polystyrene. Now let us see the essential characteristics or features for monomers to get into polymers. Not every monomer will get converted or get converted itself into a polymer. There are essential features or certain characteristics a monomer should possess. Let us see all of them in detail. The monomer should possess essentially the following characteristics. The first one is the molecular weight should be low. Now monomers in themselves are complex molecules. Complex molecules made up of different elements. And if the monomers are very heavy, if they get linked together and form a polymer, the polymer will be very heavy. And it will be very heavy for the usage or utility of the heavy polymers. And that is the reason why we have to consider that all the monomers which we used for the making of polymer have to be of low molecular weight. The functionality or reactive sites or positions. Now what do we mean by reactive sites? After a molecule is made, that molecule is generally stable. But we still want one or two spots in that molecule which are a little reactive. Because of those a couple of spots, those reaction points or reactive points, the other molecules can come have some chemical bonding and stick with that molecule. That means if I have one molecule over here and another molecule over here, both the molecules are stable. But because of there is one reaction point over here and one reactive point over here, they can combine together, stick together or link together. We need at least two or more such reactive points or positions. Minimum two or maybe more are found. So over here, what are those sites? Over here, the examples is a double bond or a triple bond. Why? So if I have a C, double bond C, and if I break this double bond, then this C will become single bond C. This carbon will get one bond. This carbon will also get one bond because the double bond is broken and the bond is divided equally between these two carbons. Since this will get one bond and this will also get one bond something can come and stick over here something can come and stick over here that means there is linkage possible in double bond let us see what happens for triple bonds instead of double bond now if we have triple bonds if i am breaking this bond of course it is with another carbon and i am breaking this bond what happens is this will become c single bond c and this the upper pi bond breaks into this and this lower pi bond will break into this. For the upper pi bond, this carbon got one of its bond. This carbon got one of its bond. For the lower pi bond, this carbon got one of its bond. And this carbon also got one of its bond. That means something can link over here. Something can link here as well. Over here and over here. That means four things can link over here. So instead of making just a linear chain, this can also form a sheet. And that is the reason why double bonds and triple bonds are reactive sites or reactive positions. The next is functional groups. So if I have C, C, O, H, it is easier to break the C, O, H bond rather than breaking the C, C bond. C, C bond is a strong covalent bond and it cannot be easily broken. But this C, O, H bond can be broken. And once it gets broken into something, we can use the C, C dash. And on this dash, we can link something else and form a polymer out of it. Thus, two sites are known as bifunctional. Let us see them in detail. The bifunctional sites, the first example is ethylene glycol. This is nothing but CH2CH2OH. The CC bond is a strong bond and that is the reason why we cannot break this bond. But the bond we can break is the COH bond which is over here and over here. That means we can break this bond and we can break this bond. And something can come and get attached over here at this place and something else can come and get attached over here at this place. So because of this, ethylene glycol is a bifunctional because it has two reactive points. The same thing is with adipic acid. It has COOH and then this is CH2 four times. What do we mean by CH2 four times? It is nothing but carbon, second carbon, third carbon and fourth carbon. To the first carbon, we have COOH attached to it. 
and to the last carbon also we have COOH attached to it. Now all these carbon to carbon bonds are strong bonds and even the carbon hydrogen bonds are strong bonds and that is the reason why we cannot break any of these bonds. But over here we can break the functional group. What is the functional group? The COOH group, the carboxylic acid group. And that is the reason why we can just break it from here and break it from here. So over here when this side gets broken something can come and get attached over here. When this side gets broken, something can come and get attached over here. Again, this has become bifunctional because we get two reactive sites or two reactive positions. The third over here is a three site or trifunctional and an example of it is phenol. Phenol is nothing but a benzene ring and OH attached to it. When I zoom into phenol, I have a benzene ring which has a double bond over here, this double bond. So if I break into this double bond and break this double bond, if I'm breaking the double bond, this carbon will get something and this carbon will also get a bond. So both of these bonds can stick something to it. If I zoom into this part of it, again, it is the same thing. Over here, it's a double bond. If I break this double bond, this carbon can get something attached to it. This carbon can also get something attached to it. And finally, we have over here, this bond, this carbon can get something attached to it as well. That is the reason why wherever I have made an asterisk sign or a star symbol, that is nothing but the functional point at the reactive side of that particular compound over here, which is phenol, and it's a trifunctional. Finally, we have something known as four sites, also known as tetrafunctional. Tetra over here means four. And the most basic example of it is urea. Urea over here is carbon, double bond O, single bond NH2, single bond NH2. First, let us study the structure of it. Carbon has a valency of 4. That is the reason why it can make 4 bonds over here. So, the carbon is using its first 2 bonds to bond with oxygen. So, this carbon over here is using the first 2 bonds to bond with oxygen. The third bond to bond with a primary amine. And the fourth bond also to bond with a primary amine. Primary amine is nothing but dash NH2. That means 1N and 2 hydrogen. So over here I have a dash NH2. Over here also I have a dash NH2. So this is nothing but my one amine group. This is nothing but my second amine group. And this is my oxygen group. It is very easy to break this amine group. To break this amine group as well. And to break these two bonds with oxygen. So if I am breaking the first amine group, something can come and stick over here. If I am breaking the second amine group, something can come and stick over here. And while breaking the oxygen, two things can come and stick over here because oxygen is taking up two bonds. And thus four active sites are present, four reactive positions are present and thus urea is nothing but tetrafunctional. The monomers with three or higher functionality are also known as polyfunctional where poly means many and functional is nothing but the reactive points or the reactive positions. In practice, bifunctional monomers are used to maximum extent. So the monomers which are bifunctional, for example, we had ethylene glycol over here instead of CH2, CH2 over here we had an OH and OH. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Over here, we'll break this and this and something can come and get attached over here and attached over here. Because of this bifunctional property, polymers can form long chains. So here in today's session, we studied about polymerization. While studying about polymerization, we also studied about monomers and polymers and how we can convert those monomers into polymers and what all other features needed to convert that monomers into polymers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.